Hello guys, welcome back to SWS Boxing. Delighted to be joined with John Brennan. He's he's had 13 wins, uh, seven defeats, two draws, and four wins by knockout. And he's back out. Um, is it the is it the 16th of September, isn't it? Yeah, 16th of September in Harrow Leisure Centre. Mm -hmm. And he's moving up to middleweight. But before we get into the combat fight, my first question for you is: How did you get into boxing? I got into boxing when I was younger, really. Um, it's a bit of a weird story because I, I used to rock, knock around on the estate as a bit of a scally. And um, one of the guys that used to look after the local boxing club, Terry Tier, um, said he didn't like a lot of the, the local lads that hung around there. And uh, he said to us, I'll come down to the boxing gym and we'll see what, what you're really about. So, and um, he took us down there. And usually when you go into a boxing gym, you don't spar on the first day, but we asked a few of the boxers to, to liven us up a little bit. And um, we had the spar. Few of us got bashed about a bit, and uh, I didn't like it too much. I wanted to go back there, keep <laughs> carrying on until I could bash them about, and then uh, yeah, that's how it came about. Really, I I just carried on going. I caught the bug after that. Mm -hmm. And did you have a big amateur career? Yeah, so when I was amateur, I had twenty two fights. I think I won eighteen. Um, I had a relatively good amateur career. I won the um, one under tens, under I won the under tens novices. Uh, I got to the ABAs. I lost in the London final actually to Dudley O'Shaughnessy, who went on to win it. So. Mm -hmm. And that was the that was the first and only time I entered seeing the ABAs. Because then after that, I turned pro. Mm -hmm. And you made your debut um, against Chris Broppy, I think that's how you say his name. And it was in uh, two thousand and ten. Sorry, say that again. My, my my pro debut. Yeah, your pro debut was back in two thousand and ten. Yeah, two thousand and ten. That was a draw against Chris Broppy in quite it's quite, it's quite a tough fight, and it was an introduction into the pros for me. Really, you know. Going from the amateur crossover to to the pro game, I, it opened my eyes a little bit, and um, yeah, that, that was, uh, I had quite a few there, so it was a, it was a good opening uh, opening fight. Do you feel like you won that fight? Oh yeah, I definitely feel like I won that fight. I mean, I had I had the more telling shots. Um, he was quite busy, but nothing was really landing. I think they was looking at the accumulation rather than the quality, and I think the quality was coming from me. Mm -hmm. But and then um, so with your um. Then you had three good wins as well. Um, but after your draw, you didn't rematch him. You fought somebody else and you got a, a win against somebody who was two and one. Oh, was that Ida Koku? Yeah. Yeah, no, that was that was a pretty good win on paper. I didn't realise it at the time, but he um he went and boxed for uh, one of the African nations in in a in a multinational. So he was he was um he had a bit of a good pedigree and uh and I boxed really well so I think that was the first time actually I've made under 10-7, I got to like, it was like 10-6, but it was under the world weight limit and I was shot at the weight. So I don't even know how I box that well, but I managed to, um, I managed to put on a bit of a clinic and, um, yeah, close out the show. Mm -hmm. And you, then you fought Duncan Cotter. Duncan Cotter, yeah, yeah, I boxed him after that. That was a magnet. Um, I boxed him, that was a magnet home show. And uh, Duncan was a well-travelled journeyman. He didn't take much punishment from any guys and I was just happy to get the rounds in learn some more experience in my on my pro career and yeah just keep pushing on mm -hmm. then uh you thought i can't i don't know how to print hard gender i think we'll go on that hard chill that was hard hard chill, yeah was and you've got to stop it close to me he was in yeah he was relatively close to me he's in Hounslow. i think hard chill was the first fighter i had where he'd come there to open up and i can actually draw him on and, and, and pick my shots and, and let my power go because although my record doesn't really um donate that power I, a lot of people just feeling with me or no, I can whack and um if I land clean on the button or on you know and I time my shots right then I know I can put people out of there. Mm -hmm. Then you um had a your first step up um against an eleven and oh prospect um and you jumped on uh, an Eddie uh, a matchroom show at the O2 yeah. and how was it fighting at the O2? It was lovely fighting at the O2, really nice, a great experience. Um just in the circumstances at the time I should have should have really given myself a bit more time to prep. I mean, I only had, I think I had four days to get ready for that. Now, I lost about eight pounds in that four days. and um, But nonetheless, it was a good experience. I think I give a good account of myself. I had a lot of good of, um, commentary and uh, a lot of good uh, feedback from, from the guys that were doing the commentary on the night. So it was a lot of positive to take from it. Were you, as that was your first defeat, was it hard to take, especially as it was on the matchroom bill at the O2? Um, yeah, I do believe so. I believe it was, it was hard to take, but it just reset my focus, if anything. 
I was thinking, you know, looking at Glenfoot and before that, he was, I think he got to the ABA finals. He actually lost to the guy that I lost to, Dudley O'Shaughnessy. So I was thinking, you know, I'm not a million miles away from these guys because I tagged them a fair bit and um, I should have been a little bit more, should have been a little bit more decisive in my actions, you know, gone after him a little bit more. But uh, I suppose maybe I didn't trust myself quite a lot. And um, also I was a little bit weight drained, that, that play a part on it. But yeah, again, lots of positives from it. And was it hard to motivate yourself to get back in the gym after that defeat? Um, I wouldn't say it was hard to motivate myself to get back in the gym because after a loss, you just want to correct that. You want to make that right. But I think in between them fights, I had um, I had a son and a daughter that was born. And that let, that, there was a little bit of a, a lax in my, my progression through, through my career. You, you notice on my record, you notice that, you know, there's been, there was between a 10 and eight and a 10 month period where I didn't box at all. That's due to, you know, having the kids and, um, yeah, just set me, being a dad just set me back. Mm -hmm. But then you fought um, Gle um, Kevin McCauley and he doesn't get stopped, but you've stopped him. Yeah, you know, Kevin's, he's a, he's a well-traveled trial horse, you know, and he, and he comes to fight. He hit me with a few shots early on, I think. I don't know, we're going to get around this. Because my trainer at the time, George Carmen, was saying to me, listen, you're not going to stop this guy. You can hit him with a bat and he'll still be there. You need to box. And uh, when we come out to box a bit and he was throwing a few haymakers, I was thinking, oh, I'm going to have to stick a few together here. And I hit him with a check left hook right hand. The right hand went around the corner and hit him in the temple. And I see his eyes sort of, his marble scrambled and he went face down. I thought he ain't beating that. But to his credit, he beat the crap, the count and um, his legs were gone. They just waved it off. He's a tough man, isn't he? Mm, yeah, yeah, he is a tough man. He's a nice fellow and all. I chatted to him after the fight. I was chatting to him before. He's a nice guy. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. you fought Lewis Scott. Yeah, Lewis Scott. That was a, that was probably one of the fights that I'd. Um, I don't take much pride in, to be honest. I took it at, at the stage of my career. I needed some money, and I, I had a small family to support, and uh, I wasn't looking at being a journey manager or anything like that. But I took it at short notice. I wasn't really well prepared. I wasn't doing myself a justice by that. And uh, yeah, went up to Gateshead, got a good payday, and got the L. And that was um, that was uh, a regret. Was that the first time you got put down in your career? Yeah, it was, yeah. I mean, that was a bit of a flash knockdown. I sort of spun out from a shot. I was a little bit square and he's caught me square. And um, I, I didn't think it was a relative knockdown. I thought it was flash and they could have, they, I didn't even need the count, but they give it anyway. And obviously I thought, oh, it's a 10-8 round. Were you hurt by that shot? I wouldn't say I was. I wouldn't say my marble was scrambled. It was just literally a case of, um, he's caught me as I was square. It's, it's unbalanced me. And um, and then, uh, yeah, I, I, I misfooted myself. And when I come back up, I thought, oh, I didn't think they was going to give it a count, to be fair. And even when they they, they stopped the fight, I think it was in the, late in the fifth. Fifth. Stopped the fight, yeah, in the fifth round. But I was that was I was coming back into the fight then. I was tagging him quite a bit. And I thought that was it was a little bit of a premature stoppage. I was thinking, oh, let's get this kid out of here before he starts starts putting it together. I'm really busting this kid up. Mm -hmm. Then you fought Anthony uh, Frizzgillard. Fitzgerald. Yeah, yeah, Anthony Fitzgerald, an Irish guy, come over to London. Again, another one. I was struggling for money at the time. I needed some quick fix. They said to me, oh, we've got a fight up in... Um, I forget where that was now. It was... was it? Um, Preston, it, it says. Preston, that's it. Yeah, I'm far by Liverpool. Yeah, that was another away job, taking the money. I wasn't well prepared. Didn't do myself a very good service. I had a good fight with, with that Fitzgerald. You know, I didn't train very, relatively great for that. 56-58. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not... Uh, give me a couple of rounds. I thought I probably done enough to earn a draw. You know, you know, and then when I'm on the right hand side of the bill, you got to knock them out to get a draw. So yeah. I wasn't going to get nothing. And I think he went on to be British champion as well, didn't he? And then he Fitzgerald. He was yeah. he was Irish. I don't know if he fought for the British title. I'm not sure. I know he fought for some uh, relatively good standards of titles. Well, we he won. Fought, um... He won some titles. I, I know yeah, that, yeah. but I'm not sure. Yeah, he got think... some titles. He ended up fighting um, Spike Milligan. Mm-hmm. He fought him, who, you know, he went on to fight world level. He went on to fight the likes of um, the Canadian banger. And uh, he, was, he fought him in good companies on the state shows and stuff. So, Anthony Fitzgerald can, it was mixing with the best of them. So, I did, didn't do myself a disservice by um, taking that fight. And, yeah, we went out six rounds. They gave me a couple of rounds. I think I could have got a draw. On another day, if I was fit and I actually was prepared for that fight, I could have got the win. Mm -hmm. Then you fought at Wembley Arena, another big arena that you fought at um, against Ahmed yeah. Patterson. What what show was yeah. that? Was that a, like a... That was on a um, Frank Warren. I think I said that again at four days notice. Um, 
that was on a Frank Warren show. But that was the first time I've been generally been hurt. The body shot took the wind out of me. It's like my lungs went from this to this in in seconds. And um, yeah, the referee come over and called it off. And uh, I've never been hurt to the body before that ever. Not in sparring, so I didn't quite understand. Did you try beat the count, or were you just badly winded? I was on the floor. I didn't even get really get a chance to beat the count. I went down. Uh, my, my trainers were jumping. It was right at the end of the round. My trainers were jumping in to get the stool out to, to get me on the stool. And I was still down on one knee, and then I think the ref just called it off. And but by the time I'd got up and sat on the stool, it was all pretty much done. <clears throat> Did you feel um, in yourself that you you wanted to continue? Probably not. Probably not. If I'm being honest, Sam, uh, that, that punch was decisive. It hit me right on the button, and um, yeah, it took the took the air out of my lungs. Uh, even if I'd have beaten, so like if that was in between the round, and I got a ten count, I probably wouldn't be it. With the minute, no, I was, I was still in the after effects of that. Mm. Even when the fight was done and I stood in the middle to announce the winner and the loser, I, I still felt like a bit dishevelled. So, because some that. fighters say that body shots hurt more than like shots to the head. Do mm. body shots hurt more? Or well, the head shots you can shake off. You know, I've had I've had multiple shots when you see stars and you think, "Well, oh, I don't want to take too many of them." But then you know, you get on your bike or you, you go full throttle again and you sort of shake it off. Whereas the body shots they linger and they ache and they hang there for a lot longer. You know. Was it hard coming off three like back to back to back defeats? Yeah, I would. I, I think I needed to to reset myself and sit down and think where I wanted to go with my career. You know, there was people saying to me, "Oh, take the money and and, and go in the old way route, and be in the away corner." But that weren't for me. I, I don't think my um my morals and my principles would let me go with that. So yeah. I said, "Look, I need to reassess. I'm good enough to be boxing at a certain level, and I needed to be built." up to that level you know and I, I don't think that I was it wasn't about the people around me because my managers are my managers at the end of the day I, I'm the man and I, I make decisions so I should have been a little bit better with my decision making mm -hmm. so, so is that a regret in your career that um, like is those do you have regret have you got any regrets like in your career oh uh, yeah most definitely them fights I took on the right hand side of the bill I wouldn't have taken them fights if I knew now what I knew then I wouldn't have even had them fights but in that situation, in circumstances, when I was looking at my, what are my resources for my income and my expenditure, boxing was one of them resources that I just needed to draw from. Mm -hmm. But then you got, um, you had somebody who was 12 and 12, so over eight rounds, and you got back to winning ways. Yeah, and that was for a title, actually. That was for the British Challenge um, Super Welterweight title. They didn't announce it on BoxRec because BoxRec weren't actually recognising that title, but the British Boxing Board of Control approved it. And um, yeah, that was that was for an eight round British. No, it's for actually for, it was over a ten rounds. That was for a ten rounds against Pavel Senkov. No, it's against Stanislav. Ah, uh, that's it. Nikov. Stanislav Nemkov. That's it. Yeah, that was over ten rounds at the centre in um in Slough. That was like my homecoming fight. And um, oh, yeah, it only says round. eight rounds on box track. Yeah, I think they've got that miscorrect because it was definitely a ten round um challenge belt title. But and I, um, how did you feel winning your first title as a pro? Oh, I felt brilliant. I felt brilliant. Um, it was at home. But in the build-up to that, I actually ruptured my cruise ship playing football. And um, I didn't let anyone know. I had, I had some painkiller injections to just get through it. And um, but luckily, I managed to get through it. And I boxed with a guy on points. He was, like I say, he had a mixed record. So he wasn't there to lose. He was there to come and steal the show. So I had to mm -hmm. uh, be smart with my boxing and put on a bit of a clinic. Yeah. And then you fought... Um... D D D Vads. Um, can't pronounce his surname. But you beat him over four rounds. Davidas. Oh, what's his surname? It starts S Sajelka. Oh, Sajelka. Davidas Sajelka. Yeah, yeah. I boxed him on a Tommy Dove show in uh, Bethnal Green. You were cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that was a again. That was a good points points win. I really I, I tagged him a few times and I hurt him. If I'd have stepped on the gas, I probably could have got him out of there, but. I was more about just thinking about getting the W. There's, there's so many um, anomalies to, to pro boxing. There's so many elements to that equation that, that, that run through your mind. That uh, I suppose when you're when you're a paid pro, when you're um, you're backed by the Eddie Hearns and the, and the matrims of this world, you, you can throw caution to the wind and just crack people out, and, and you don't got to worry about the implications of, of what you're doing. Whereas when you're when you're a part-time pro, plus I'm running sites. Or I'm working on sites and uh, I'm trying to look after my family and stuff. It's, there's so much going through my mind in the build up to certain fights that, that I have to take into consideration. Mm -hmm. And you fought Casey Blair, 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 Blair. Oh, Casey Blair, yeah, the Irish guy. That was a total worth. That was when I just signed a deal with my new manager at the time, Joe Powell. 
and they were putting on consecutive shows at Tolworth under the uh, Joe Pole, and um, he was working with Johnny Edwards actually, Noble Arts. So I was working in, t in tandem with them, and and I, at the time I thought it was going to be a brilliant link up. It, it did turn out to be a good link up because I got a number of wins with Joe, and it's culminated in a Southern Area title fight. Oh yeah, when you fought a senior byfield at your call, um, yeah. the Southern Area Super Welterweight title. Um, how did you feel in in for that fight and? What were the nerves like going into a Southern Area title fight? I'm lucky. I'm. I say I'm lucky, really, because I don't suffer nerves at all. I think maybe I've, I've had too many smacks to the head. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't really suffer nerves in the build-up to fights. I wouldn't say I'm too casual, but, but yeah, I just I get them butterflies, and obviously, I, all I think about really when I go into the fights is that as long as I'm all right and he ends up all right, then everything will be all right. But um, yeah, I don't suffer nerves in that way. I don't. I don't. It's more. I don't. I try not to put the emphasis on who I'm going to let down or, you know, or I'm going to, or I'm going to make happy when I do these things. It's just where I'm so in tune to boxing, fighting, it just seems like, here we go again, you know, I, I just love, I love fighting, I love getting involved and um, it's just one of the things I need to, I need to do. Mm -hmm. Then you fought um, S Sonny Whit uh, Whitning and it was a no contest. Sonny Whitting, yeah. That what happened a... with that? Well, basically, Sonny was, um, Sonny was brought in at last minute in the, on the right hand side of the bill, but he wasn't like a. He's not your typical journey man. He's not. He's not a gay. He, he was. He, he can have a bit of a fight, and and he's a bit of a bit of a, a rogue as well. So he hit me hit me after the count a few times. You know, like when the ref gets in between you and splits you up, and he's sort of like cracking me after that. And I'm thinking, oh, I said in my head, he hit me, done this for me twice, and I thought in my head, three strikes and you're out. One more, I'm going to have you. And um, the bell sounded. He's cracked me after the bell. Then I've bashed him a few times. And um, a bit of pandemonium broke out, but it wasn't even that bad. I mean, when you look back at the um, Dillian White and Anthony Joshua first fight, and you look at the amount of people who was in the ring there, and the melee that ensued off the back of that, no one really called that off. It was all sort of like, right, get back to your corners, get it, get it, get it sorted, and we go again. Obviously, because the amount of money that's involved in them fights. Whereas a small horse show at Tolworth, last fight of the night, with a referee I'd never seen on the circuit before, and I'd been around quite a bit at that time. I'd never seen this ref on the circuit. Each sort of Cheat himself with my language and went, no, no, I've seen enough, and that was it, pulled it off. But for people like me who sold like however many tickets, uh, you know, I'm I'm, I'm covering sh stupid amounts of things on there. How it like a loss? It, it did, yeah, because in the build up to it, you know, in the build up to every fight, you've got to make weight, you've got to train hard, you've got to, you've got to think about all the variables like money, income, expenditure. So for me to do all of that and then that culminating some Herbert coming over and getting my fight stopped, it was. And also the referee crapping himself and not let what was turning out to be a good fight, and what we could have seen an actual culmination to has turned into a damp squib. Do you think you could have stopped him? Yeah, for sure, definitely. I was smacking him on a regular basis coming up to, before he hit me after the bell, and I was tagging him fairly regular. He was doing all these dirty things to try and sort of knock me out of my stride and uh, draw me into a fight. Whereas I was I was countering him, and then when I was countering him and stinging him, I was going after him. So. I know if that fight would have carried on, there's no doubt about it. I would have either put him away or I would have won on points. Mm -hmm. And then you got a first round knockout. First round knockout. Who was that against? Um, Andre. Uh... Oh, Andre Morovic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's Andre Morovic. That was um, that was the first fight I'd signed with a, a new manager, uh, Derek Waddle. Oh yes, doesn't he yeah. um help? I see him quite often at shows, and mm. I, he helps some of the away fighters. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That was was that over an eight or was that an eight, eight rounder? No, it says six. Yeah, six rounder. That's it. Yeah. So um, I stopped him in the second round. It says first. First round. Oh, I thought it was second. Yeah, I, I know. I caught him with a classic body shot around the corner, underneath the uh, underneath the ribs, and um, he hit, hit the deck, and I knew he wasn't getting up. He was obviously where I've been there before, feeling them body shots, and I thought, no, he ain't beating the count. Mm -hmm. And then you fought uh, two four rounders. You fought against Good but Bo Bodie, uh, Omara, and then you fought Victor Edgar. Yeah, Victor Edaga. And uh, before that, who was it? K K it says Kabodi. Oh, keyboard on me, yes. You're so much better at pronouncing names than me, but yes. I'm articulate, if anything. A keyboard on the air. He's a. Um... Nicaraguan based in Spain, he was another fighter we got in for um see just to test to sell things. I mean, 
he, I could have definitely stopped him, but he was quite wily. You know, every time I clipped him, he sort of he thought he knew how to sort of outfox and out get away from the, the other haymakers that were coming. So, and I was quite happy to just get the W and progress my career. Mm -hmm. And then you fought Victor Edgar, another very tough, durable journeyman, and you beat him yeah, over the yeah. rounds. Yeah, we had a good fight, me and Victor. That was um, he was he was going, he, he was throwing a few, and I was throwing a few, and it was yeah. I think we got a fight the night that night and the, the crowd were rocking. I think I believe that was in made so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so that was a good night. Then you fought, um, and then you had another second round stoppage um, before you fought. Uh... That's it, that's the second round stoppage. That was against Andre Morovic. The first one was um, first one was in Heathrow. This one was at your call, Bethnal Green. Oh, yeah, that's against um, more. Wait, so you rematched Morovic. him? Slovakian, Andre Morovic. Yeah, did you rematch him? No, no, no. The first guy I fought was um, Sajalka. Was it Andre Sajalka? Oh, yeah, that was it, yeah. And then and then this guy was Andre Morovic. Oh, yes. But you stopped him in round two. Yeah, yeah. So I had, this was this was a brilliant case of the guy I'd come to fight, he was he was he was not like your typical journeyman. He was trying to throw and do damage. And uh, I thought this is brilliant you know not like like with keyboard when i hit him hard he sort of like then he'd slip and he'd do his ducking and countering and, and grabbing and pulling he sort of knew how to um diffuse your, your danger whereas andre sort of like he only knew one gear and that was brilliant for me because i sort of lined him up with a few shots and then i got him out of there in a second mm -hmm. good it was good stoppage then you yeah. fought sean robinson um for the southern i think it was southern area yeah southern area title fight that was that was probably one of my most disappointing nights because and it was a draw yeah, I mean, I was on the right hand side of the bill on a Goodwin show. I've never had much joy on the Goodwin shows, um, and I've just. Were you signed with Goodwin? No, I wasn't signed with Goodwin. No, I wasn't, and that's why that's why I was on the right hand side, and Sean Sean Robinson was on the left hand side. You know, so again, it's the so old VA job. He was the home fighter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you feel off. hard done by on that night? Massively, yeah, massively. I mean, in the grand scheme of things. That fight that could have trajected my career, and um, it was hugely disappointing because I trained really well in the build-up to that. Everything was perfect. I had a strength and conditioner helping me. Uh, me and Gary Dawson never left no stone unturned going into that. And I just bought also Andy Joycey, who was another trainer of mine. I just brought him into the fray when he was um, he done the corners with, with with Gary, and he was helping me a lot. Again, like I mentioned, the strength and conditioning, and um, I just think like the stars aligned for me that night, but obviously not close enough to give me the win because I was so gutted after that. Mm -hmm. But um, why did you not rematch him? I asked for the rematch. I asked, it, I asked for it for about 30 minutes after the after the fight. In the chat, Steve Goodwin came into me and he said to me, did you think you won that, John? I said, is that a fucking stupid question or what? Of course I won it. But he said, well, when do you want the rematch? I said, I'll have it now. I want, I want, sign it now. And he said, no, I've got other things for Sean. So it's obvious how the, the path was mapped before we'd even had that fight. So, that, you know, the the... The end goal was already mapped out. And I, was just meant to, I was just meant to be a stepping stone. Wait, so you were step? You was meant to be a stepping stone for him? Yeah, yeah. They, they were thinking, right, we will get one more defense because I was a voluntary. I wasn't a mandatory Southern Area defense. They, they sort of had a look at. Was he the I champion? Yeah, he was the champion at the time. Yeah. And so, out of the ten rounds, how after the fight? Um, how many rounds out of the ten do you believe you won? I reckon I won eight rounds easy. I mean, out of push, I'd say seven. I had him wobbled in the third, almost so he touched the deck, and then I just uh, and I pummeled him in the mid in the mid rounds. I was thinking, where well, in my head, I'm thinking I'm well up here, and people are coming to me in the corner going, "You're doing it, you're doing it." Um, I took a couple of rounds off where I'm thinking, "Preserve yourself, preserve yourself," because I'm going to need it down the stretch because um, he was quite a skillful boxer, Sean, and he had a decent jab. And I thought I can tag him and hurt him because I tagged him and hurt him so many times. And you know, like when you see the whites of people's eyes and you think. He's hurt here. And I went to chase him a few times, but I didn't want to get over exuberant with it. I just thought to myself, be smart, John. A couple of these rounds take off and then we'll go again. And I think for the last two rounds, all I did was chase him around and bash shots off his head. And I and I and when they when they uh, when I walked back to the corner, everyone's like, You've done it, you've done it. And I and I'm thinking, yeah, this is my night, you know, this is what I've worked all all, all this time for. And um, yeah, it's went on to be. Well, so does that hurt you the like what? Fight has hurt you the most, like in your career. I'd have to say the Sean Robinson fight, like, like, probably. Sean well, Robinson even fight. more than your defeats. Yeah, because like, you know, you know the defeats I can accept. Like you, you felt like you beat the champion in his own backyard, his show. 
and yeah. it gets snatched away from you. Yeah, exactly that. The fix I can accept, you know, I've got no one to blame but myself. At the end of the day, when the whistle blows, I'm in there with someone else. So I can say that, oh, you know, I was told this or, or, or you know, I should have done this or I should have done that. At the end of the day, it's down to me and me alone. Whereas on that occasion, it wasn't down to me. It was down to the judges, the referee and and the, and the manager of that show. And yeah, I just feel like I got the rug pulled from underneath my feet. Mm -hmm. But then you fought um, in Maidenhead against Luke Middleton over four rounds. Why did yeah. you go down to four rounds? Uh, because I was due to fight someone else. That person dropped out. Luke said he'd take it at lastminute.com, uh, but it'd only be over four. And um, yeah. Just to stay I, 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 active fight. Yeah, just to stay active. And if anyone knows about pro boxing, they know that the, all of the um, the underlying agreements that go on and, and certain things that go about. So, yeah, it was just a case of I had to take the four, take the win and, and, and take it at that. Mm -hmm. Then you fought in um, Tanzania. Yeah. Was that a good experience in boxing in a foreign country? Not the best, if I'm honest, Sam. Because Tanzania is not a, not a very desirable place. Um, it was not what it said on the brochure, basically. But, you know, in the build-up to it, I was told we were fighting at the National Stadium. That was rubbish. We were fighting in a field. Um, it was, was literally a field? Fight. Literally a, a field that they put, they put a ring up. The day before that, it was, it, was, it was drenched, soaked. I mean, like six inches of water. And I was saying, this is shining on. We've travelled here for nothing. I had, I, had a, I had to fly to Qatar and then go from Qatar to Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. So I, I travelled for 16 hours, got there on the first day, had the weigh-in, um, hadn't drunk a drop. I think I was wake, I hadn't drunk a drop in like 12 hours. I was parched, I was dehydrated, ready to keel over. Got to this hotel, they didn't have no drinking water anywhere. I, I should have sorted myself out before I got there. I never, because I was got off the plane, it was literally, right, get in the cab, let's go. And um, got to the hotel. I was being told, you know, you're going to be... Having your way in at the National Hotel, Glitz and Glam, I got there. That was another that was another dump. Uh, we was out the back in some urine-stained place uh, on, on, on a set of scales that I've got better in my bathroom. Um, had the fight in Tanzania on the Saturday. Um, the guy, Issa Buana, who then later changed his name to Nicholas, Nicholas Emdo, when I originally took the fight, he was meant to be five foot ten, um, I like well away, you know, what they were saying to me is, oh, you get an easy win, it'll be a travel. And because uh, it was in COVID at the time as well, no one was boxing. So I'm thinking, I'm still in a march here. I'll go out there, I'll get another win. I'm keeping myself ticking over whilst no one's boxing. I thought like I was doing a, I was doing like a shrewd move, but it turned out to be all over rubbish. Yeah. Well, that's, that's not, that's not good. But then you thought, yeah. um, after the pandemic, you came back in November against Craig Sumner. I, I was there and you had him hurt at times. Yeah, yeah. Craig was, um, Craig was again, at lastminute.com. We was due to fight someone else. That was the first fight I had on a Nielsen show. And the first time I had, uh, I had dealings with Carl, Jared and Mark. And um, I really liked, liked the way that they operated. And I really liked the way they've done things. Uh, they're sincere guys. And um, it was a pleasure to do business with them and a pleasure to be a part of what they're putting on. So, yeah, I got on that show. Uh, Craig jumped in at last minute, uh, you know, a few handshakes and a few things behind closed doors and I got the W and that's all she wrote. Mm -hmm. And then you thought um, your most recent fight was last mm -hmm. year against Jack McGann at York or Beth yeah. Green, and you did put him down as well in the second round. Yeah, I dropped him. Uh, again, I dropped him and um, I was having success. Do you know what it is with me, Sam? I'm... I'm I wouldn't say like I'm your ultimate boxer. I, should, I can't. I, it's not like I've only got one gear because I can. I can counter punch him, and, and I was counter punching him well. That's what I caught him with the, sh the, the overhand right. I threw as he threw and caught him on the head and put him over. But in that instance, when he was hurt, I should have really come out and parked him up. You know, I should have should have went for the kill, see the blood in the water, and, and went crash bang. Because even if he had stopped me, I think all right. Look, I've gone by. I've gone to my principles and I've gone out on my shield. Whereas where I've gone out and I've tried to counter punch him again, I've given him a little bit too much rope and I've ended up hanging myself because he clipped me high on the head. My knees, my knees are a little bit, I, I think I mentioned earlier, I had, um, I had ACO injuries in both my knees. And um, as I've spun out from a shot, he's clipped me high and it's made my knee buckle from underneath me. Then, um, yeah, the ref jumped in and I said to him, I know what you think, you think my legs are gone, but they're not, it's my knee. But 
he didn't give me a chance to recover and uh, that was it it was over what so when you put him down did you expect him to get back up initially no because you know when people go face down i'm thinking he ain't getting up from that you know usually when you go face down that means you yeah because like, when you're face down. normally like face mm. down mm. you tend to be like knocked out yeah 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 when you go face down your lights are clean out and i didn't think he would um we we scrambled his senses, you know, and um, but he, he beat the count. Give me his credit; he must have been fit. And uh, and I spoke to Jack afterwards. He he done a lot in the way of um, how he gets the weight off, uh, you know, his conditioning, uh, his dietary. He he's got his spot on. And again, he's another one. He, he's a full time pro. He's a full time pro. Whereas I'm a I'm a part time boxer, full time site manager. <laughs> I have so to try do and you buffalo. regret not going for the kill when he got back up? Do you regret not yeah, like, putting it on him? Yeah, I do massively. I think I should have just, you know, with me, I love seeing the white people's eyes. If I see a bird, I'm, I'm gonna, I wanna, I wanna crash bang wallop and put them out of there. But at the time, I'm, I'm speaking with the guys and we're saying, you know, you've caught him on the counter. Right? Let's, let's draw him on. Don't smother your work. Don't, don't rush it because you, you're gonna, um, you're gonna muffle it. You're not gonna do your, your best stuff. So I was, I sort did of like. Did you feel like when you put him down? Did you feel when he got back up, uh, he would have walked into another one? Possibly, possibly. I'm, I'm, you know, when I'm being told this information, I think, yeah, yeah, you know, I could draw him on and lead him on to another shot. But really, I think if I'd have just, it's sense of scrambled and you've got a small window where they're only going to stay scrambled for so long. If I'd, if I'd have pushed it on and maybe just cleaned him out, it could have been another story. How upset were you, um, especially getting stopped after having so much success in the first three rounds, uh, then getting stopped? I was eliminated for the English title and I was already in my head thinking about where I'm going to go after this. You know, I had, I had good backing from the Nielsen guys. They've just jumped on with the Warren Boxing Management. Um, I'm thinking, I was thinking to myself, there's, there could be could be a nice little end to this road, you know, if I, if I keep pushing. And um, yeah, it, just, it upset me massively because I'm, you know, like your dreams are sort of mapped out and they're, they're not, they're, they're there to be had and you can't grab them. That's, mm. that's what done me. That's why... I've had quite a bit of time out and um, why is I've had that? quite a lot going like, on. Why have you had so much time out of, um, like, fighting? Initially, it was a regroup, a refocus. I wanted to, I wanted to A, speak about what we thought culminated in me losing. I think it was maybe the weight because I lost, like, six pounds in the space of a day. Um, and that would have been ultimately if I didn't lose that, and then I'd have been in the middle, and I probably would have been a little bit more healthier, and I maybe could have pressed the issue a bit more. Um, the other one was I had a, my my son and my, my son was born in around that time, and um, I needed to dedicate my my energy into making sure that he was all right as he's got older and he's not so sufficient on me and his mum, and um, we don't mind leaving him in care and stuff like that. I can I can do what I need to do in order to be the box that I want to be. So mm -hmm. that's just but how it comes about. But you're back now, um, 16th of September. And um, mm. how excited are you to be returning to the ring? Oh, I'm actually, I'm buzzing. I can't wait. I cannot wait. Um, so I'm still managed by the Nielsen guys. Obviously, when I put up in Bracknell, we had such a good relationship. I, I joined up with the, the Nielsen guys. So I'm still managed by them. The show is actually by a, a different promoter and a different gang. But I've been given the nod by Nielsen, Mark, Carl and Jared to say, yeah, look, Let's get you back with a win because it just works out. The time-wise and the logistics work out perfect for me. And uh, get you back with a win. And then hopefully, if I can get the win on this, that will culminate in a, a title fight on a Nielsen show just before Christmas. Oh, that's good. So is this one six rounds or four rounds? Do you know? I think this is going to be for a six-rounder. Mm -hmm, that's good. Do you have an opponent penciled in or not just yet? Not just yet. I, don't, I think they've got a number of opponents in mind, but I don't want to say anyone just in case they can't confirm it and I'll have egg on my face. So <laughs> as soon as he's confirmed, I'll put it out there. But at the moment, no, the, the, the fight's booked in. The um, the venue's booked in. It's under a, a Mo Prior in conjunction with uh, Patel and Tony Banj. It's, it's a co-promoted show at Harrow Ledger Centre. Yes, it looks like a good show. And um, for anyone wanting to come and support you, John, how much are tickets? Tickets are £50 for the uh, unreserved and was a outer section and then a hundred pound ringside. Hundred pound ringside gets you a free course meal and um, yeah, table service and all of the lavish. Mm -hmm. And of course, so um, I saw um, go um, I saw that you was men fight Tom Brennan. I think it was last year. And 
yeah, why, Tom did that, why did that not go ahead? Uh, it was meant to be at the Cassim Stadium, and um, it was meant to be at the Cassim Stadium, and then it just it didn't come about because I think logistically and tickets wise, it wasn't it wasn't we weren't making the expense expenditure meet the income, and uh, in the end, I think we just sort of like. Tom took a different fight. I think it was still on that show, or did they move it to another it show? It was, it was on that show. Yeah, on the Cassam Stadium. Yeah, he took another fight on that show and uh, and um, it, it carried on. But I'd like to think that maybe me and Tom could get that on another time. Battle of the Brennans, that'd be a, that'd be a good, good fight. Mm -hmm. But um, would you be looking at like um, a southern area? Like Aaron Sutton's got the southern area, I think he, mm -hmm. and got um a title fight. Uh, I think he's fighting somebody else in October. I think he might have yeah. vacated the belt. So, would that be something that you'll look at? The southern area middleweight's vacant, then yeah, most definitely I'll have it. If um if Aaron still had the title, I'd ask uh, Mark and Carl a few times what's the, what's the plan with Aaron. I think because they they co-manage him or they've, they've had a co-promoters dealing with him where he's boxed on a few of their Swindon shows. I don't think that they sort of like rely on what he's looking to do rather than helping him try and engineer what he wants to do. So I think with Aaron, that, that might be out of, the, out of the way. If um if he's vacated the title and that's, that's something I can have, then yeah, most definitely I'll put my name forward for it. I know the board um the board look at me in fondness because I've always met my targets. I've always made weight. I've always sold my tickets and I've always um, always shown up and give a good fight. So, mm -hmm. so um with... um. So, do you think the goal for this year is the Southern area or just the title? Just the title in general for me. I need something. I need something to just. I don't just need a, a flat nose and uh, and too many bangs in the face to show at the end of my career. I want, I want something to put on the man. I mean, I've won. I won um, the British Challenge. Uh, I won a GBU title that um, in that in that Heathrow show that it, it was never announced because. Box rec didn't um, didn't recognise it, but again, that's for sanctioned things. That that's not anything for like credits or applauded. That's just because they're not paying enough money for these guys to be um, accredited. So I won the GBU when I was out in Africa. They actually didn't give me the win. They said that the cut was, was they, they give him the win on a technical decision for a cut, but, which we know is any cuts prior to the fourth round going out should have gone to the scorecards. And on the scorecards, I was battering him. So they never went to the scorecards. It was all a bit. Underhand, the WBF ruled me the winner, but Boxrec didn't. Um, Boxrec went with the Tanzanian official, the regulatory commission's input that they give them and give the win to Nicholas. But oh, so technically, well. you should have fourteen wins. Yeah, exactly that. But again, Boxrec, who are I wouldn't say are the most reputable company in 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 the game, put what they see fit, and um, that's just that's just how it is. I mean, so you. So they didn't go to the scorecard, they just gave nah. it to win. No, nah, they didn't go to the scorecards. We didn't even have a ringside position. Some girl in a white jacket's come up and give me a dirty tissue to try and wipe in my eye. I had a cut along my eye, but I ended up getting about five stitches put in there. She went and dab it. I went, no, don't touch me with that. You definitely not touch me with that. And then she pulled the fight off before I'd even had a chance. She didn't even ask me, like, are you fit to continue? She just called the fight off. And uh, he's jumping up and down, the other guy, and uh, the rest come in, waved his hand. I'm thinking, what the fuck's going on here? Like, and then, and then I'm going Garrity. Then, uh, like when I go, I'm. Would you rematch him? Would I rematch him? I'd rematch him tomorrow. I'll, re I'll rematch him in a minute because the amount of times Tanzania, I've banged him. Oh uh, no, definitely not over there. No, no, no. I'll take him if you wanted. To, if you wanted to go to a um, a neutral place, I'll take him in Europe. I'll take him somewhere, at, you know, not out of my way and out of his way. If he wanted to travel over here and come over here and have it, no problem. Mm, yes, but um. Before I let you go, John, do you want to just thank anyone who's ha um, helping you so far in your career? Yeah, yeah. I'd like to thank all of my um, my managers that have helped me get to this point. So Jim Evans, the late Jim Evans is dead now, bless him. Georgie Carmen helped me out massively as a manager. Uh, Gary Dawson, my trainer for a long time, and he still helps me out from time to time now. He's been massive in my career. He's, I'd like to think he's helped me become the fighter I am. And some of them best fights have been with Gary. Um, I'd like to thank Andy Joycey, my trainer. Um, who trains me now he's been exemplary in my career and helping me out and uh, logistically it's brilliant for me now because he's on my doorstep and I can do my best things with him uh, Derek Waddle helped me out for a long time he was matching me and then managing me for a little bit and obviously where I am now with Mark Carl Nielsen and Jared great guys uh, you struggle to meet a better mob in boxing Box is a very dirty game it's shark infested waters you just got to hope you ain't going to get nibbled on too much but these boys ain't there to they're there to help you you know not, not get munched on
So I'm thankful for them. Also, I want to thank my partner, Sean, because without her, I, I couldn't do none of this, literally none of this. She's, she, she's my backbone, my support, and um, everything I do, I, I have to thank her for. Mm -hmm. And um, good luck on September 16th, John, and thank you for your time. Thank you, Sam. Thanks again, and um, sorry for the wait. It's all right, mate. Anytime. Thank you. Speak, speak soon. Cheers, Sam. Bye.